Congratulations on the results. How do these numbers, what is the key takeaway for you from, from these numbers and how that informs the company and the momentum that we're starting to see? Does that momentum hold through for the quarters ahead? Yeah, we've had a very solid quarter and a very solid uh, first half, as you saw. Um, our earnings per share was $1.72, which was a beat on consensus. Um, we're seeing growth across the board in every geography and in every market. Uh, oncology, which has been a great uh, success story for AstraZeneca, grew 22%. Uh, and cardiovascular renal medicines grew 19%. Uh, we also added uh, the rare disease business, which was acquired through the acquisition of Alexion. Um, and we're almost at the one year anniversary of that acquisition. So across the board, through all our therapeutic areas, we're seeing very strong growth. And to be clear, as we weigh up the recessionary risks across the world now, do you see that momentum holding up in the quarters ahead? Yeah, again, I think our business is uh, fairly resilient. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, we supply uh, life-saving medicines uh, across the world. Um, uh, we are actually seeing the diagnosis rates that had gone down for oncology products and, and cancer. People are not going and getting uh, screening done for cancer. That's coming back now. Uh, we're also seeing uh, patients go back more into the hospital. Uh, again, through, through the COVID period, uh, hospitals were shut down. So um, I think we're seeing, uh, you know, the, the fundamentals sort of come back into our business. Uh, but that being said, our focus has always been on innovation. Uh, we spent uh, over 20% of our revenues in R&D. Uh, this quarter we spent about you know, $2.4 billion in R&D. Uh, we announced results for one of our really incredible medicines called Inher2 at uh, the ASCO uh, convention, which is the... American Society for Oncology, and um, it was the first time in a decade that uh, we got a standing, or, or any company got a standing ovation given, given the results of that uh, product. So I think it all comes down to innovation and continuing to uh, innovate yeah. and supply. Uh, when, when, it, when it comes to the COVID treatments and COVID vaccines, uh, the, the momentum there going, going forward, is that going to start to wane? Yes, yeah, so you know our COVID medicines uh, are, are twofold. Uh, one is on the vaccine front, which um, you know th we were we were the first to come out with a vaccine, and uh, in fact uh, we've saved through the first year of supplying vaccines uh, six million lives, and this has been independently estimated. We supplied over three billion vaccines uh, in 180 countries. Two thirds of those were in low middle income countries. So again you know, millions and millions of lives saved across the globe. And then we have a very innovative therapy in the uh, COVID, era, uh, COVID medicines, which is called Evusheld. Um, and that's really an antibody, so it's not a vaccine. And what it does is provide additional uh, immunity to patients who are immunocompromised. So when you look at COVID, even though uh, the infection rates have gone up, hospitalization rates have not, but um, immunocompromised patients constitute about 15% of people that do get hospitalized. So it's those people who are you know, still sort of you know, protecting themselves uh, that this offers additional protection for. Can I get your views on the strong dollar? King dollar has been a factor and a theme throughout the last few months. Do you expect that to be a, fair, a drag in, in the months ahead? How much of an impact on these earnings? And does that continue, do you think, in the months ahead? Yeah, so we've definitely had an impact on earnings. Uh, we uh, report, uh, you know, on actual rates, but we do give guidance on constant exchange rates. Um, we've said about a, uh, about a, you know, single-digit uh, impact on on our earnings as well as on revenues uh, as a result of the strong dollar, uh, and we're seeing that, uh, you know most likely continue throughout the rest of the year. Okay. Um, so it's definitely had an impact. And, and China, a major market for, for Astra, what is the demand picture looking like for, for, for China? Again, pulling us out towards the end of the year. So we've guided this year to a single digit decline in our China business. Uh, and, and that's sort of uh, in line with where we reported this quarter. Um, that's more driven less by demand, but more as a result of pricing policies that the China government has had, um, and uh, which are you know, NRDL and, and VBP policies. And that's had an impact on our business and every other, other business. But again, our objective is to continue to bring new medicines, which get better pricing. And 
and, uh, and better access. And, and that's really what we want to do in China as well. What is the acquisition, what is the M&A appetite at Astra at this point? Any holes that you're looking to fill? No, we have a very strong pipeline. In fact, uh, you know, our, my R&D team will tell me that I can't even fund uh, all the projects that I have. So um, we have a very strong pipeline, so we're not looking to fill anything. Um, that being said, uh, we did add a rare disease business, uh, Alexion Pharmaceuticals, which uh, we want to grow and have big ambitions for as well. So we'll continue to add in pretty much every area of our business, whether it's rare diseases or respiratory or cardiovascular medicines or oncology. Um, um, and mostly would look for, you know, technologies or uh, products that, that complement all the products that we have. Mm. Um, but again, we're not, uh, you know, there's, there's research in our labs, but we also know there's research happening in a lot of places in the world. So uh, we, we always try to balance internal and external innovation. And, and you've talked about the relative resilience of, of this business in a recessionary slow growth environment. Is, are you comfortable with the cost structure? Are you looking at making any changes there, whether it's hiring or other areas? To cut back on costs? So we're constantly looking for efficiencies in, in our business. Uh, we have seen uh, some uh, costs go up. For example, our distribution costs uh, are up about 30% compared to last year. Um, you know, freight and shipping and, uh, you know, so, so that's definitely gone up. Um, but any sense that that's going to come down anytime soon? Are you starting to see that peak? Where do you think we are in that pricing? Uh, it's hard to say. Uh, again, we, we the way we try to manage it is we have long-term contracts with our uh, with our vendors uh, and suppliers. We also try to have uh, on the manufacturing side uh, dual source API. Um, so we're always uh, managing through you know making sure we're not uh, uh, dependent on one vendor uh, and have pretty resilient supply chain. As you can imagine, over the last two years, you know our supply chain has been tested uh, time and time again. Uh, as as well as supplying the three billion vaccines was not an easy feat. So um, I would say, you know, our operations team has done a great job and making sure our supply chain is very resilient.